Good evening. I'm Ray Walker. And I'm Judy Jordan. This evening, we're going to take a look at an island, a majestic, noble island of higher education, right in the middle of one of the most vibrant cities in the world. The city is Dallas, and the island is Southern Methodist University. SMU is 62 years old now, but still retains the energy that led to its creation in the early part of this century. The idea of building a Methodist school of higher learning in Texas actually began in the 1800s in two schools, Southwestern University in Georgetown and Polytechnic College in Fort Worth were established in the late 19th century. But the leadership of the Methodist Church envisioned something more than small colleges. They wanted to build a great university and in 1911 began looking for a site. Civic leaders in Fort Worth nearly persuaded the church leaders to begin building the university there. But Dallas had offered a little hilltop out in the country, six miles from town, in a rustic setting called Highland Park. And it was decided that it was a perfect place to build the great institution that was to come. All that was needed was a name for the school. The head of the church hierarchy pushed hard for Texas Wesleyan University. But that name wasn't a big hit among Dallasites. So, by a narrow vote, the school's founding fathers chose Southern Methodist University. A depression in Texas crippled the new university's attempt to raise a million dollars to build the school, but there was enough money from Dallas supporters to construct one building on that Highland Park hilltop. It was called Dallas Hall. It officially opened its doors in the fall of 1915. Over 700 students showed up that first day, and the poor registrar, who wasn't expecting that great a turnout, ordered classes delayed for several days until he could get everyone signed up. Due to a lack of money, the great institution had to start small with a liberal arts college, theological seminary, and the music school. But Southern Methodist University was no longer a dream. It was real. And in the next six decades, it grew and grew and grew. Stately Dallas Hall now overlooks more than 80 other buildings on 155 acres of one of the most beautiful campuses in the world. The schools of law and engineering were created just 10 years after the university admitted its first student. And in the years that followed, more programs in the arts, sciences, and business were offered to meet the diversified interests and needs of the ever-growing SMU student population. Today's students are just as diverse. They've come to SMU for many reasons, and SMU continued to provide them with whatever atmosphere they desire. It's kind of neat just to have friends from all over the country, you know, and be with people from different backgrounds instead of just going to a state school where most people are, you know, the same and stuff. So that's a good experience in that respect. A lot of schools around Illinois are kind of big, and I wanted something that was like in between. And SMU, to me, is you know, like a medium-sized school. You know, you're not, you're not a number. It's in between. It's not too big, but then it's not too small. You know, you still have a lot of opportunities, you know, in different fields. Now, I came down to play golf in SMU's team, and uh, SMU had a, a, a good blend of academics and social life, and it's one of the reasons I came down here. It's such a well-rounded school. There's so many... <clears throat> Academically, it's very, very good. There are lots of organizations on campus you can get involved in, just, just numerous things. It um, has a good social life. There's a great Greek system here if you want to get involved in that. It's something like two-thirds of all the students who, who apply from here get into medical school. And that's basically attributed to the fact of um, a very uh, intelligent and candid young man or elderly man who is the pre-medical advisor here. That's one reason that why a lot of uh, pre-med students do come here. I just kind of wanted to get away. I wanted to get in an environment where the people were different from where I'd gone to high school. And, you know, I found that at SMU. The business school has a fine reputation, especially in Dallas. And since I'm a business major, I thought that that would be a good place for me to be. And both my parents went to SMU, too. <laughs> so. 
I just thought maybe it's a good thing. Keep it all in the family. SMU didn't grow alone. Dallas has grown too. The SMU campus is still six miles from the center of town, but Dallas has long since surrounded the campus, giving SMU students a unique opportunity to become a part of this exciting hub of the Southwest. Dallas provides excellent off-campus entertainment and employment, both high on the list of today's college students. And on campus, well, there's always plenty to do at SMU. The university's libraries are brimming with nearly one and a half million volumes. Its museum contains some of the world's most spectacular artworks. The arts are special at SMU. That's where its roots are. And the university maintains an international reputation for its innovative yet demanding approach to the arts. But all the learning doesn't come in the classroom. The Bob Hope Theater, for example, is the home of the annual USA Film Festival a showplace for the talents of today's movie makers, and a forum for students of this important art form. The campus is practically abandoned on most Saturday afternoons in the fall. Everybody heads to the Cotton Bowl to cheer on the Mustangs, and to witness an always stunning halftime performance by the SMU Mustang Band, the best-dressed band in the land. <laughs> Despite all that's going on, students still find enough time to get an education, and the quality of education they receive at SMU is unrivaled. Although the university is 62 years old, its facilities are modern, and with its heritage of consistently high quality, SMU attracts a highly qualified faculty and students from all over the world. Together, they embody a special spirit on the SMU campus, a spirit of achievement. The whole school, the way the whole school is organized and, and the relationship between the students and the, the teachers and just the whole way it's run, I like that. SMU had the departments and the, the quality of education I was looking for. And I'm a foreign language student and they have an excellent language department here. And that's what I was looking for. The people here have just turned out to be really, just really great people and help you in any way. That includes the faculty and the staff and everybody. If you decide to go into engineering, SMU requires you to take courses in humanities and courses out of the art school, courses out of the science department. And when you come into SMU and when you leave SMU, you don't leave an engineer. You leave a person who's trained in engineering, but you can also talk about art, and you can also talk about biology, you can also talk about writers. And you learn a lot. You learn a lot through inner and conversation with uh, students and, you know, their ideas and their goals and, you know, what they want to do in life and things of that sort. Well, I think the quality of the education that I've received has been up to par. Um, I think when I graduate, I have a $20,000 education, and I think it's been worthwhile. And the fact that you can get on a personal level with the teachers, you know, the classrooms aren't too big, and uh, they've been really helpful. SMU is got a real good reputation up north as far as having a good academic school but yet at the same time having the social aspect too so it's a good combination plus the professors or some professors at SMU are just excellent top in the country uh, to me a, a college education is much more than what you get from the books what you get from classes although SMU is very academically oriented you you have the, the option to choose to take hard teachers and hard subjects, or there are some easier, easier things around, and you can choose to take those too. SMU's expansion reaches much further than that little hilltop in Highland Park. It's grown worldwide. Right now, there are Southern Methodist University campuses in Austria, France, Spain, and Italy. And there are special tours for SMU students, study tours to Britain and the Soviet Union. In addition to gaining credit toward a degree, these programs allow SMU students opportunities to gain insights into their own and other cultures. And for the SMU student who wants to get away but doesn't want to study overseas, SMU has another branch campus, the Fort Bergwin Research Center. This campus is nestled in the tranquil mountains near Taos, New Mexico, a perfect setting to study the arts, humanities, and sciences.
SMU was born during a financial crisis, survived and thrived. Today, with more students, more faculty members, and with the added weight of inflation, Southern Methodist University needs more money to continue to provide quality education. SMU has embarked on an ambitious $153 million fundraising campaign to continue the hallmark of its heritage, quality education. In 62 years, we have uh, come a long way compared to institutions that are 100 or more years old, and I think that is a normal progression from a school that started out in the sleepy little town of Dallas in 1915, and now uh, as Dallas has grown, so has Southern Methodist University. In the long range, I believe that SMU has the potential to become an outstanding uh, school in the United States. Uh, if we follow the normal progression of schools of our size and of our tradition, that's in the cards. But of course it won't happen unless we make it happen. Over the years, the educational needs of Texas and America have changed. Where liberal arts once meant Latin, Greek, history, English, mathematics, and other classical studies, today's SMU student is preparing to enter a much more complicated world, a world in which frontiers must be pushed backward through paleontological research into fossil fuels and radiocarbon dating. Anthropological study, where the past is explored to give us a better understanding of the present, and exploration of the present continues in subtle new ways. As in the use of this talking dog, a clever creation consisting of a hidden microphone and speaker so that children with speech and hearing problems learn how to talk freely, increasing their skill and articulation. And exploration into the future increases daily with constant probes to find solutions to our current problems, such as energy research and the discovery of more efficient energy sources. Southern Methodist University was nothing more than an idea a little over 60 years ago. Today, it stands as a monument to that idea and provides strength and encouragement for more ideas. As one of the largest private universities in the southern half of the United States and as an integral part of Dallas, the eighth largest city in the nation, SMU has a lot to offer. Tonight we've given you just a little taste of the flavor of SMU. The university is an experience in itself. If you'd like to find out what SMU can offer you, just send us a card or a letter. Send it to SMU in care of KDFW-TV, 400 North Griffin Street, Dallas, Texas, 75202. We want to thank the nice people at SMU for their help in giving you this look at their world-famous university. And we want to thank them not only for their past achievements, but for their ongoing dedication. Dedication to provide a superb education at one of the finest institutions in the world, Southern Methodist University.